Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment. It is the 29th. It is, that is of September, by the way. Um, it is a little bit past 9.30 in the morning. We're up to 9.43. We're off to a late start today. But this is today's, this is today's photo moment. The only, as far as I know, hey, I can say it as far as I know, as long as I know it's true, right? Sounds like a politician. I am the only daily live photography show on the Facebooks. If anybody knows otherwise, let me know. Um, say, th send a shout out in the uh, in the comments there. I see a few of you watching live. Love is always lovely to hear from you. Please do say hello. And uh, today's photo moment is actually by request of. Oh, sorry, I sorry, buddy, I forget who. Uh, forget your name. Uh, sorry. Anyway, somebody who had pointed out that the GX eighty five, this fabulous little Lumix camera here that I love so much had its firmware released. It turned out it was released yesterday. I thought maybe I missed something big, but it just happened yesterday. And this firmware release adds a new feature called in-camera focus stacking. Now, what is focus stacking? How does it work? Okay. I have a big video on this that I'll link to. Actually, by the way, I'm gonna put a blog post on photojoseph.com. There'll be a blog post on there. We'll put a link to that in the notes that will outline what I'm doing here and also where to get the firmware updates. If you have this camera, you can do that. I'm um, gonna also link to a couple of other videos that I did. So I did a video before on focus stacking done the manual way. And the cool thing is that now you can do this in camera. So what is focus stacking? Well, if you, if you are familiar with the idea of macro photography, you know that, that if you shoot, when you shoot really close up to something, you get really shallow depth of field. And that can be millimeters or even less. It can be super, super shallow. Now, if you're familiar with aperture and depth of field, you know that if you stop down your lens, you get a greater depth of field. So if you take your lens, you stop it down to 16 or 22 or 32, whatever it might go to, you might be able to get enough depth of field to get everything in focus of the subject that you are trying to photograph. And we're talking macro photography, right? So something little, like I wanna photograph this little T thing and I wanna have it sharp edge to edge because it's the product that I'm showing, but I gotta shoot macro, I gotta get close to do that. And with macro photography, shallow, shallow depth of field. So if you stop down, you might be able to get everything in focus, but by stopping down all the way, you end up using just the smallest bit of your lens. You're not really using the sweet spot of your lens. You're not getting maximum sharpness out of the image. So to get that, you want to open it up. Maybe not open up all the way. Let's say you've got an F2.8 lens. Usually most lenses, their sharpest point is stopped down one or two stops. So if it's an F2.0 lens, it might be at F2.8. If it's F2.8 lens, it might be F4. Usually stop down a little bit. And that's just because the outer edges of the glass, unless you're talking about the best glass, the most expensive lenses, the outer edges tend to be a little bit on the softer side. So by stopping it down, you don't get that. You tend to stay a little bit sharper. Anyway, if you want to maximize the sharpness of your lens, you're going to shoot it at, you know, let's say a four or five, six, something like that, which is definitely going to give you like this much depth of field. So what focus stacking is, is where you take a series of photos focused at different points along the, the, along the path of whatever the object is. So again, if this is the object and we're shooting it, you'll focus it this tip and then a little bit in, 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 all the way to the other end. And you end up with five pictures, 10 pictures, 20, 30, 40 pictures, just depending on what it is. And then you take those pictures into an app like Photoshop and you do focus stacking. That's where you combine the sharpest parts of all these images together. It's really, really cool. And one of the things, one of the advantages to focus stacking over straight up regular, you know, stop it down to get enough uh, depth of field, other than the sharpness, let's just say that on your lens, you can stop it down, it's plenty sharp, you get the depth of field. You all know that focus is, is a fall off, right? So if I focus on, let's get something bigger here. If I focus on the center of this right here, and let's say that depth of field says it's this much is in focus, it's not like it's perfectly sharp, perfectly sharp, perfectly sharp, and then it hits the edge and it goes, boom, it's soft focus. It's a fall off, right? It gets less and less in focus or more and more out of focus as it goes. So if I was, let's say to have, let's do it like this. Let's uh, need objects. Let's, can you see these? You kind of can. Are gonna it's this yeah this works okay you can see those over the thing let's just say that I'm trying to focus on these three things here or I'm shooting with these three things and what I want to focus on is the cup in the middle here that's what I want to focus on if I focus the camera here and get this completely sharp this is going to be reasonably sharp and this is going to be reasonably sharp but if I want this to be really soft and this to be really soft but this to be entirely sharp it's not possible to do with a single photo because your depth of field is going to get you know some of this is going to be partially in focus. With focus stacking, you could have very shallow depth of field on the lip of this cup so that everything else here is super, super soft, but then stack a series of photos that go all the way through here so that right after here, suddenly the focus, boom, falls off. So you get this really soft, you get this really soft, but that is perfectly sharp. That's one of the great, cool advantages of focus stacking. So now that you understand what focus stacking is, 
we cannot do that in camera. So how does that work in camera? Well, the GX85 and GX80, if you're in Europe, it's a different model number there. Uh, the GX8 and uh, I think another camera model, I'm forgetting which one now, have um, have the ability in camera to shoot something called post focus. So the idea behind post focus is that the camera is taking a series of photos for you at different focus points, and it puts them into what's basically a video file. Um, it is a 4K photo mode, and if you're not familiar with that, what 4K photo mode is, is it's a mode where you're shooting 4K video, but it's in a 4-3 aspect ratio, so it's like a picture, and 30 frames per second, you have these pictures in there that you can extract frames from. Well, if you're doing post-focus in 4K photo mode, then what you get is instead of the idea being the, there's action happening in front of you, you're trying to freeze the moment, the camera actually changes focus one tiny little step at a time, one frame at a time, so that all of those frames, of, the, of those 30 frames per second, are at a slightly different focus point. And in the camera, what you can do is then touch the back, uh, touch the LCD to say, focus on that, focus on that, focus on that. And it changes focus as it basically just jumps to a different part of the video file as it focuses from one point to the other. Crazy cool. So now what you can do is take that post focus file in camera and say, hey, build a focus stack out of this image. And you can even build it out of a, out of a portion of the image or video, let's call it a video, out of the portion of the video. You can say, Right, it focused from, um, if I'm shooting this scene here, well, if I was shooting, okay, I realize you can't see that. If I was shooting, back to my setup here, if I was shooting and it post-focused all the way through to this, I can say, only grab from here to here and make that part in focus and the rest of it leave out. Crazy cool. So that is what is brand new on this new camera, uh, on this uh, camera with a new firmware update, and that's what we're gonna show. So now normally I would show you things on the camera by connecting the HDMI cable to the camera so you can see through it. However, when you go into post focus mode, the HDMI turns off. I don't know why, but it does. And it says on there, HDMI disabled, um, post, post focus is on. So I've had to set up a camera here to point at the back of the camera here so that we can do it this way. So let's see what uh, this looks like. That looks reasonably well. I think we can see this. Okay, cool. So the camera's already in post focus mode. If I go into the menu and go to camera mode, there's post focus, and post focus is either on or off. So I've turned it on. So now the post focus is on. If I, let me shut it back, go ahead and take a picture, and do I need to darken this? Yeah, I think it's okay. If I take the picture, you're gonna see the little green squares that bounce around showing all the different parts of the scene that it just captured. So that was, that row of, of images that you, uh, uh, the row of squares that you just saw were all the different focus points that the camera saw. It focused on those and basically racked through it throughout this video file, the 4K photo video file. So now we have a video file, a 4K photo video file that is a focus rack from start to finish. And we can play that back in touch on the screen to grab different points. So let's go back to that. Um, hello, there's my camera. I hit play. There it is, and it's uh, you see it's just up there. Post focus play. I can tap the screen or I can hit the uh, arrow on the on the pad here. Uh, there we go. So that's on. And now, as I touch on a different part of the scene, you can see how the camera is focusing on that. Crazy cool, right? Isn't that really just bizarrely neat? Okay, so that's what post focus is. So now. I can build a focus stack file out of it. And so there's a little button at the top of the new one there, FN3, I don't even know which button FN3 is. Oh, it's actually this one right there. But I'm just gonna tap the screen. And it says focus stacking, auto merge or range merging. So again, you can choose to auto, meaning it's just gonna take everything in the scene to stack it together, or range. I only want this part to that part to be in focus. So let's take a look at the range merging because this is just crazy cool. Uh, let's go back to this. So I tap on range merging. And now I can tap on something, see it tap there, and then I can tap on another point in the back, and it's showing now all those green squares what is going to be brought together. And then I tap this button here, and it says, do you want to merge the chosen focus point into a picture and save? I say yes, and it does it. And it creates this, creating an image, and we wait a moment. It, you know, this is big, crazy computing stuff going on inside this tiny little camera, so give it a moment. And it is taking the sharpest parts of each one of those frames and blending them together. So cool. And this, by the way, even though this may take a moment in the camera, this is still way faster than doing it in Photoshop. Just saying. So, all right, let's go back here. Almost done. Almost done, almost done. 
And there we have it. So there is an image where that is sharp and that is sharp. So the front foil thing is sharp, the back um, uh, can there is sharp, and everything is set. That is so cool. So that is in-camera focus stacking. New firmware update is the 1.1 update on the GX85 and GX80, and, um, and it's fabulous, and it works. So yeah, I think this is awesome. I can't wait to play with this a little bit more. I literally installed this update right before this photo moment started. So other than doing it once at my desk to make sure that it had actually installed and was working, this is the first time I've actually really done it. So um, I'm looking forward to playing with this a bit more and seeing what else I can do with it. I will take the results of this along with instructions on how to get and install the software update, uh, the firmware update. I will put all these on my blog. Go to photojoseph.com if you're watching this today or anywhere near today, you will see it as the top entry. If it's uh, if it gets past today, then uh, you'll need to scroll down a little bit. But just look for a post, a blog post about GX85 and uh, in-camera focus stacking. And that's what you'll be looking for. Other than that, that's it. That is today's photo moment. This is a killer new feature. Um, if you saw, not yesterday's because I was out yesterday, but if you saw the day before his bit on mirrorless, uh, I was talking about one of the things I love about Lumix specifically, but um, I think this applies to pretty much all the mirrorless cameras out there, that it's buying these cameras is like buying a Tesla and that it keeps getting better over time. Um, it's it's not like a traditional car or traditional camera where you buy it and that's what you got for the rest of its life. These cameras get better over time and this is a perfect example of that, adding in a killer new feature that we didn't have before that is now available on these cameras. So, love it. All right, guys, uh, that is it. I am going to, uh, let's see here, what am I going to plug today? Let's throw up this plug here. Um, if you, Oops, wrong screen. If you have not yet seen this, if you want to learn more about the basics of photography, please do check out my Photography 101 course on lynda.com. Photojoseph.com slash photo101 will take you right there. And if you're not a Lynda subscriber, you can get a 10-day free trial by going to photojoseph.com slash lynda. And that'll take you right there. Once you sign up for your 10-day free trial, you can watch all of the learning goodness you want, not just my course, but others. And Linda is just a phenomenal resource. There's so much learning to be had on there. I've got a whole bunch of courses on there and I'm going to be doing more. It's great. I love it. Good fun. Okay. That's it. We're out of here. Um, don't know what we're doing tomorrow yet, but we'll figure it out. And in the meantime, have a great day, folks, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.